Now in Wyoming, our, one of the leaders of the state Senate is Jim Anderson. What Jim Anderson likes to say is in Wyoming, we don't use our turn signals when we drive. That's because that's it's nobody's business where we're going. <laughs> we, we really are for limited government. <laughs> limited government means limited in size, limited in scope, and limited in how we spend our money. And government to be effective though, to be, to be effective, I mean, that's the way you really get to be successful. And you know that if you're gonna be successful, you have to be effective. And that means people want value for their taxpayer dollars. Government must do for people what, must not do for people, what people could and should do for themselves. And government really shouldn't get in the way of people who are pursuing the American dream. And that's what I like so much about Alec. Your mission is to advance the Jeffersonian principles of free markets, limited government, federalism, and individual liberty. Now, you know and you see it at home, the American people are anxious and the American people are angry. And they're anxious and angry because they are, feel like they're paying more for government and getting less. Now, I go home to Wyoming every weekend, and like all of these folks here from the Wyoming legislature, what we're hearing around the state is, with regards to Washington, we've had enough. We've had enough Washington borrowing. Washington is borrowing $5 billion a day. We've had enough of Washington bailouts, $700 billion last year. We've had enough of Washington spending. $787 billion in a so-called stimulus package. And we've had enough of Washington takeovers. And right now, Washington is trying to take over health care in this country to the tune of a trillion dollars. Well, you know, there was a Gallup poll about people's opinion of government. Uh, and this was just the last week. And they said to people, well, how much of, of all the dollars, the tax dollars that you send to Washington, your hard-earned dollars, how much of that do you think is wasted? And the American people think of every dollar they send to Washington in taxpayer money 50 cents of every dollar is wasted. Of all the years Gallup has been polling on this question, that is the highest number that they've ever gotten to. 50 cents of every dollar the American people believe is wasted. And the second question that they asked is, do you believe that there is too much government in terms of rules and regulations of business today, or too little? And by two to one, the American people believe there are too much in terms of rules and regulations on American business today as opposed to too little. Well, in Wyoming, we don't ask much from Washington. Basically, we like to tell Washington, just leave us alone. Our air, our water, our land, our pocketbooks, and our guns, leave us alone. <laughs> You know, you had a recent poll of all of the members of ALEC, and uh, they identified your four top issues. State budgets and taxes, federal interference in states' rights, healthcare reform and preserving our individual rights, and then energy concerns regarding cap and trade, or as we like to call it, cap and tax. But you all know that the number one things in the minds of people in your states are jobs and the economy. That's what people are concerned about. And, I had the privilege of spending Thanksgiving with the Wyoming National Guard. They're serving in Kuwait and Iraq, and I had town meetings al in, along with Cynthia Lummis, our state represent our uh, U.S. representative uh, in Congress. We both went to Kuwait to visit with, uh, with our troops. We went to three different bases where there were, our 700 men and women are stationed, had town meetings. And the questions people were asking were, what's the economy going to be like when we get home? Will there be jobs? What about our jobs in the energy sector? You know, with, with coal, with natural gas, with oil, with uranium. What about our jobs when we get home? Now you're having a town meeting, it's Thanksgiving day, you're surrounded by people with machine guns and they're asking for jo about jobs back home. That's what's on people's minds. So people are focused on the economy. So I'd like to take a couple of minutes and just talk about the economy. America is a resilient nation and we are an optimistic people. We will get through this. We will weather this storm. But Washington needs to learn the lessons of this storm. And it's the lessons that all of you know. It's the, lesson, the lessons the American families know. And it, it has to do with spending. Because to me, the debt is the threat. The debt is the threat. <laughs> you 
Your states have to balance their budgets every year. Wyoming has to do it. It's a matter of law. But this year, the United States is going to have a deficit of $1.5 trillion. That is three times the highest that we've ever been at. And we're looking at deficits of about a trillion dollars a year all the way through 2020. This deficit that we're looking at is both appalling and it's unsustainable. You say, what can you do about it? Well, I know all of you go to your high school class, talk to high school students, ask them about this. The high school kids get it. They're very smart. And you go into the class and say, well, what can we do about it? And they said, well, you, you know, if you have this kind of, you should, one, you should stop spending. They don't think any of us are going to do that, but that's what you need to do, stop spending. You say, well, what else can you do? And they say, well, you can raise taxes to make it up. Nobody wants to do that. The students say you can borrow money from China. China doesn't want to lend us any money anymore. They're not sure we're going to get it back to them right away. But we're, you know, we are paying $700 million of interest, $700 million of interest on our national debt every day. I mean, think about what the budgets of your state are, $700 million of interest every day. So the kids get it, and they said, well, I get the final thing they say is, well, you can print more money. And they know that means inflation, which means that the dollars in our pockets are worth a lot less. Well, instead of getting it right, the nation is spending more. And earlier this year, Washington passed this big so-called stimulus package. I voted against it. The, uh, the American people were told it would be timely, targeted, and temporary. Jobs would be created or saved. Well, let's look at some of the headlines on these saved jobs. The Boston Globe, stimulus job boost in state exaggerated review fines. Columbus Dispatch, not all jobs saved by stimulus were in danger. Even the Denver Post, stimulus jobs count in Colorado overinflated. And in the Chicago Tribune, Illinois data on stimulus-related jobs saved, created, don't add up. That's a place where they let dead people vote, and even they admit <laughs> that the jobs created and saved don't add up. And then we you know we just had a. Uh, I was introduced with someone from uh, you know the, the the senator from Connecticut. Well, you know, con there's money, there's jobs being saved in districts that don't even exist. It said in the 86th congressional district in Connecticut, the stimulus created 25 jobs. Well, the district doesn't exist. It got no money. So where did the jobs come from? There's been, the um, a nonprofit in Georgia used the stimulus money to give all of their 508 employees a raise. Okay, that's what they did with it. But yet they got reported on the website that, that the raise for 508 employees actually saved 935 jobs. So you say, how does this work? Well, our state senator, Kurt Meyer, asked Lynn, Lynn Boomgardner at one of the committee meetings in Wyoming about this very question because uh, she works for the governor's office and, and was testifying on behalf of the governors on jobs created and, and, and saved. And, and, and Kurt said, you know, how is it that the stimulus created 18 jobs in this section when we only got $19,000? And, and, and Lynn says, I don't know what the data is worth. She said, to me, it's just a big mess. Well, I mean, she was being honest. So what did Washington do? They attacked her for being honest. And that's, I mean, that's kind of how they do it in Washington. It is not a surprise that uh, taxpayers don't believe they're getting value for their money, because we're not. And now we look at our own economies, and we know what works and what doesn't work. None of us want Washington spending money that competes with our own private businesses in our own home states. We know that 70% of all the jobs created in this United States are from small businesses. It's the small business that drives our economy. Small business to me is the goose that lays the golden egg. It's the American dream, but I worry about the health of the goose, and it doesn't seem to me that too many people in this, in this city are worried about the health of the goose. When you combine regulation, taxation, and litigation, it is not very good for the goose. These things can kill the goose that lays the golden egg that is our economy. Well, I'm also worried about the goose flying away. You know, I think we need to be a lot more respectful of the health of the goose because that's what's going to keep our economy alive. It's not going to be government. As Ronald Reagan used to say, you can't be for big government, big taxes, and a big bureaucracy and still be for the little guy. <laughs>